so hello students basically this video is on the topic gravitation field so this is as per your ncrt book and uh, this will be useful for both students who are preparing for school level examinations as well as jen neat now basically this gravitation field now field means some region now gravitation field means now suppose you have a, a region spherical region now this spherical region is devoid of any mass now if i bring if i bring any any mass to this region uh, suppose it comes to this point and then it enters the region and then it goes through this region it is not going to experience any force now in the second situation if i place a mass m at the center of this spherical region now this spherical region is such that i have chosen such a mass that its influence extends up to this region now beyond this region its influence is negligible now if i bring the mass to this particular point if i now bring this mass to this particular point now suppose this is a spherical region of radius r now this mass is going to experience an attractive force in this direction now that force that force will be given by g m m by r square this is as per newton's law of gravitation now this gravitational field it is measured in terms of gravitational field intensity gravitational field intensity now it is denoted by the symbol i or e so now this how do you measure this gravitational intensity now gravitational intensity it is measured as force experienced per unit mass force experienced per unit mass so as we can see that the expression for force is this so the gravitation field intensity will be gm by r square gm by r square now in this diagram as you can see see for this particular mass if uh, this mass is brought to the surface of this spherical region so radius vector it is directed from capital m to small m in this direction radius vector is always directed in radially outward direction radially outward direction and gravitation force on this mass will be in this direction now in this expression as you can see e is equal to f by m now m is a scalar quantity that means gravitational field intensity will be in the direction of gravitational force now gravitational force in is in this direction that is opposite to the direction of the radius vector so if if i write this in vector form it will be gm by r square minus r cap minus r cap why minus r cap because this is vector r it is directed radially outward direction r is directed in radially outward direction gravitational force is directed in radially inward direction towards this capital m this mass is going to experience a force towards capital m so gravitation direction of gravitation field will be same as direction of gravitational force so this is the expression for gravitation field in vector form how about the unit of this gravitation field now as you can see this is newton this is newton this is kg so the unit of gravitation field will be newton per kg so this is the mathematical expression for gravitation field and this is the unit now in scalar form scalar form e will be how much e will be what is the magnitude of this gm by gm by r square gm by r square now if you can see so e is equal to gm by r square this is also the expression for acceleration due to gravity this is also the expression for acceleration due to gravity so what is our conclusion our conclusion is acceleration due to gravity is numerically equal to gravitational field that means at some point if the value of acceleration due to gravity is g at the same location the value of electric uh, gravitational field intensity will be E. that is 
Suppose at some location, the value of acceleration due to gravity is 9.7 meter per second square. Unit of acceleration due to gravity is meter per second square. Now at the same location, the value of gravitational field will be 9.7 Newton per kg. So that is gravitational field is numerically equal to acceleration due to gravity. Okay. Now uh, next we will see uh, for a solid sphere. Now suppose uh, for this is the earth. Now this is the surface of earth. Uh, let's say this is the center. So R is the radius, M is the mass of earth and you have a mass, small mass M placed on the surface of the earth. Now what is the gravitational force of attraction on this mass due to the earth? What do we write? F is equal to Gm m by r square now for two point masses m1 and m2 separated by distance r what is the gravitational force of attraction between them f is equal to g m1 m2 by r square so now r is the distance between m1 and m2 but in this case r is not the distance between capital m and small m capital M, the mass of the earth, it is distributed throughout the sphere and this is mass M. But in the expression for force, we have written G M M by R square. So that means in deducing this expression, we have assumed that entire mass of the earth is concentrated at the center. So capital M mass is concentrated at the center. This is small m. So now these they are separated by distance, capital R. So this is the expression for force gravitation force as per Newton's law of gravitation. So that means we have made an assumption that entire mass is concentrated at the center. Now this is true for hollow sphere as well as solid sphere. That is if you have a sphere of radius capital R. Okay. Suppose point of observation is this point P. And this distance is small r, and this is greater than capital R, means you are outside the sphere. So, at this particular point, the expression for gravitation field will be how much? Gm by r square because r is the distance. So, this is true for both whether this sphere is a solid sphere or it is a hollow sphere. So this will be true for both solid sphere and as well as hollow sphere. So this is the expression for gravitational field outside the sphere. Now in case you are on the surface, you are on the surface. So this distance is R. So gravitational field on the surface will be gm by capital R square. So this is the value of gravitational field on the surface of a whether again for hollow sphere as well as for solid sphere. This is the expression for gravitation field on the surface. Now in case in case you are inside okay point of observation is inside that is this is radius capital R and this this is point P. Now this R, this is center O. So R is less than capital R. The point of observation is inside. Now in case this is a hollow sphere, in case it is a hollow sphere. Now this point of observation is inside the sphere. There is no mass within this region. So that means if it is a hollow sphere, E in that is the gravitational field at point P, which is inside the hollow sphere, it is equal to zero now how about if this this is for hollow sphere hollow sphere okay now how about a solid sphere suppose this is a solid sphere then what will happen then if i assume that this point p is 
on the surface of a hollow sphere of radius small r, where the small r is smaller than capital R. So now point P is on the surface of this sphere. Now remember, now, now that this is, I have assumed this to be a solid sphere. So in this portion also we have mass. Now suppose capital M is the mass of the entire sphere and small m is the mass of this sphere. Mass of this sphere. Okay. Point P is on the surface of this sphere. So what will be the value of gravitation field at this point? So for solid sphere, now we are calculating the solid for solid sphere this bigger sphere. Point P is inside the sphere. So gravitation field at this particular point. So this point P is on the surface of this smaller sphere. So E in will be G M by R square. R is the radius of this smaller sphere. R is the radius of this smaller sphere. M is the mass of this smaller sphere. Now assuming that this sphere has uniform density uniform density so in that case i can write capital m uh, by small m is equal to mass is volume times density so volume of the bigger sphere sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube this volume into a density divided by 4 by 3 pi small r cube into density so all these terms cancels out rho rho this so we have small m is equal to m r cube by capital r cube so this is the expression for small m in terms of capital m now if you substitute this value of the small m in this equation we get e in is equal to g by r square m r cube by capital r cube so we have e in is equal to g m r by r cube the r square this is r cube so we have r so this is the expression for gravitational field inside a solid sphere now as you can see in this expression first observation is e in gravitation field inside the sphere it is directly proportional to r so this is the first observation second observation is at the center at center at center if you are if the point of observation p is at center what will be the value of small r small r will be zero small r is zero so in that case if this is this is zero gravitation field will also be zero so e at center gravitation field at center will be equal to 0. So for a solid sphere, gravitation field at the center is 0. As you move outward, gravitation field is directly proportional to R. So it increases as distance from center increases. At the surface, it will acquire a maximum value. At the surface, it will acquire this value. And outside, outside as you can see, E out, whether it is a hollow sphere or solid sphere, gravitational field outside the sphere it is inversely proportional to r square so it decreases gravitational field the value of gravitational field decreases so if i have to draw a graph for a solid sphere for a solid sphere the graph between uh, gravitational field and distance from center suppose this is r equal to 0 this is r equal to r so as you move from this side to this side, the value of R increases. So this region is uh, R less than R and this region is R greater than R. So at, at center, the gravitation field is zero. And if you move from the center towards the surface, gravitation field is directly proportional to distance from the center. So directly proportional means it will be a straight line. So this is the variation of gravitation field inside the surface. So from the center to the surface, the value of gravitation field increases. So this is R equal to R gravitation field is maximum. This is E max. And this is equal to the value of gravitation field at the surface. Now outside, 
in the outer region the gravitation field is inversely proportional to r square so inversely proportional to r square means so this is e out inversely proportional to r square so outside the sphere the gravitation field decreases this is e in directly proportional to r so this is for solid sphere this graph is for solid sphere now for hollow sphere gravitation field is zero so uh, inside it is zero so this region this part will not be there for hollow sphere so for hollow sphere the graph will be this e this r is r equal to zero r equal to r r greater than r this r less than r so this is the this is r equal to r so at the surface gravitation field is maximum this is e max this is equal to e surface so from center till just before the surface for a hollow sphere gravitation field is zero at the surface gravitation field is maximum gravitation field is maximum this is the maximum value and outside the sphere the gravitation field decreases so this is the graph for hollow sphere e out inversely proportional to r square so this is all about the gravitation field for uh, a solid sphere and for a hollow sphere the variation how does the gravitation field varies from uh, center as you move from center towards the surface for solid sphere it increases linearly then outside it decreases for hollow sphere inside there is no gravitation field outside uh, gravitation field is inversely proportional to r square so i hope uh, I'm, i have made it quite clear for you to understand this concept these two concepts there are few more concepts which i will give in the next video and if you have any uh, comments or if you have any doubts in this uh, video you can give your comments uh, in, in the below comment box thank you for this uh, watching this video